Part three, yellow wallpaper. It is so hard to talk with John about my case because he is so wise and because he loves me so. But I tried it last night. It was moonlight. The moon shines and all around just as the sun does. I hate to see it sometimes. It creeps so slowly and I always come in by one window or another. John was asleep and I hated to waken him. So I kept still and watched the moonlight on that undulating wallpaper till I felt creepy. The faint figure behind seemed to shake the pattern just as if she wanted to get out. I got up softly and went to feel if the paper did move, and when I came back, John was awake. What is it, little girl, he said. Don't go walking about like that, you'll get cold. I thought it was a good time to talk, so I told him that I really was not gaining here, and that I wished he would take me away. Why, darling? Our lease will be up in three weeks, and I can't see how to leave before. The repairs are not done at home, and I cannot possibly leave town just now. Of course... If you were in any danger, I could and would. But you really are better, dear, whether you can see it or not. I am a doctor, and I know. You are gaining flesh and color. Your appetite is better. I feel really much easier about you. I don't weigh a bit more, said I, nor as much. And my appetite may be better in the evening when you are here, but it is worse in the morning when you are away. Bless her little heart, said he with a big hug. She shall be as sick as she pleases. But now let's improve the shining hours by going to sleep and talk about it in the morning. And you won't go away? I asked gloomily. Why, how can I, dear? It's only three weeks more, and then we'll take a nice little trip of a few days while Jenny is in the house getting ready. Really, dear, you are better. Better in body, perhaps, I began and stopped short. He sat up straight and looked at me with such a stern, reproachful look that I could not say another word. My darling, I beg of you for my sake and for our child's sake, as well as for your own, that you will never for one instant let that idea enter your mind. There is nothing so dangerous, so fascinating to a temperament like yours. It is a false and foolish fancy. Can you not trust me as a physician when I tell you so? So of course I said no more on that score and we went to sleep before long. He thought I was asleep first, but I wasn't and lay there for hours trying to decide whether that front pattern and the back pattern really did move together or separately. On a pattern like this by daylight, there is lack of sequence, a defiance of law, that is constant irritant to the normal mind. The color is hideous enough and unreliable enough and infuriating enough, but the pattern is torturing. You think you have mastered it, but just you get well underway and following, it turns a back somersault and there you are. It slaps you in the face, knocks you down, and tramples upon you. It's like a bad dream. The outside pattern is a florid arabesque, reminding one of a fungus. If you can imagine a toadstool in joints, an un indeterminable string of toadstools, budding and sprouting in endless convulsions. Why, that is something like it. That is it sometimes. There is one marked peculiarity about this paper, a thing nobody seems to notice but myself, and that is that it changes as the light changes. When the sun shoots in through the east window, I always watch it for that first long straight ray. It changes so quickly that I can never quite believe it. That is why I watch it always. By moonlight, the moon shines in all night when there is a moon. I wouldn't know it was the same paper. At night, in any kind of light, in twilight, candlelight, lamplight, and worst of all, by moonlight, it becomes bars. The outside pattern, I mean, and the woman behind it as plain as can be. I didn't realize for a long time what the thing was that showed behind that dim sub-pattern, but now I'm quite sure it is a woman. By daylight, she is subdued, quiet. I fancy it is the pattern that keeps her so still. It is so puzzling, it keeps me quiet by the hour. I lie down ever so much now. John says it is good for me and to sleep all I can. Indeed, he started the habit by making me lie down for an hour after each meal. It is a very bad habit, I am convinced, for you see, I don't sleep, and that cultivates deceit, for I don't tell him I'm awake. Oh no. The fact is, I am getting a little afraid of John. He seems very strange sometimes, and even Jenny has an inexplicable look. It strikes me occasionally, just as a scientific hypothesis, that perhaps it is the paper. 
I have watched John when he did not know I was looking and come into the room suddenly on the most innocent excuses, and I've caught him several times looking at the paper. Jenny, too. I caught Jenny with her hand on it once. She didn't know I was in the room, and when I asked her in a quiet, very quiet voice, with the most restrained manner possible, what she was doing with the paper, she turned around as if she had been caught stealing and looked quite angry, asked me why I should frighten her so. Then she said that the paper strained everything it touched, that she had found yellow smooches on all my clothes and John's, and she wished she would be more careful. Did that not sound innocent? But I know she was studying that pattern, and I am determined that nobody shall find it out but myself. Life is very much more exciting now than it used to be. You see, I have something more to expect, to look forward to, to watch. I really do eat better, and I'm more quiet than I was. John is so pleased to see me improve. He laughed a little the other day and said I seemed to be flourishing in spite of my wallpaper. I turned it off without a laugh. I had no intention of telling him it was because of the wallpaper. He would make fun of me. He might even want to take me away. I don't want to leave now. Until I have found it out, there is a week more, and I think that will be enough. I'm feeling ever so much better. I don't sleep much at night, for it is so interesting to watch developments, but I sleep a good deal in the daytime. In the daytime, it is tiresome and perplexing. There are always new shoots on the fungus and new shades of yellow all over. I cannot keep count of them, though I have tried conscientiously. It is the strangest yellow, that wallpaper. It makes me think of all the yellow things I ever saw. Not beautiful ones like butterclubs, but old, foul, bad yellow things. There is something else about that paper, the smell. I noticed it the moment we came into the room, but with so much air and sun, it was not bad. Now we have had a week of fog and rain, and whether the windows are open or not, the smell is here. It creeps all over the house. I find it hovering in the dining room, skulking in the parlor, hiding in the hall, lying in wait for me on the stairs. It gets into my hair. Even when I go to ride, if I turn my head suddenly and surprise it, there is that smell. Such a peculiar odor too. I have spent hours in trying to analyze it to find what it smelled like. It is not bad at first and very gentle, but quite the subtlest, most endure odor I have ever met. In this damp weather, it is awful. I wake up in the night and find it hanging over me. It used to disturb me at first. I thought seriously of burning the house to reach the smell, but now I'm used to it. The only thing I can think of is the color of the paper, a yellow smell. There is a very funny mark on this wall, low down near the mop board, a streak that runs around the room. It goes behind every piece of furniture except the bed, a long straight even smooch as if it had been rubbed over and over. I wonder how it was done and who did it and what they did it for. Round and round and round, round and round and round. It makes me dizzy. Pause there. <laughs>